Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about the control flows in Swift. It's mainly about loop and switch. This is the simplest form of looping. i is iterating from the value of, of 1 to 5 and then print out i. As we talked about before, this is a range operator from 1 to 5, including 5. There are two additional keywords, continue and break. Continue means the program will continue to next iteration of the loop, which starts at the beginning of the looping block. So when i equal to 3, the control flow jumps from here to here. Therefore, the rest of the loop block is skipped. So when i equal to 3, this line is skipped. That's why the print line is called 4 times here, and in the previous example, it is called 5 times. Another keyword is break. Break means the program will jump out of the immediate loop, so the looping will stop. So the program will jump to over here. So when i equal to 3, not only the rest of the code block is skipped, the entire looping has stopped. And as we talked about before, this is another range operator from 1 to 5, not including 5. And sometimes when you do the loop, you don't really care about the index of the loop, the i value. In that case, you can use underscore to ignore the value of i. Swift also supports the traditional way of looping for var i equal to 0, i less than 5, i plus plus, and then do something. This is very similar to other languages. And uh, also Swift has the while loop. While this condition is true, do this loop. And do while loop is repeat this block until this condition is true. So these things are very similar to other languages. Swift also supports the labeling of the loops. For example, here we have two nested loops. The first loop is about i, and the second loop is about j. And the first loop is labeled as out loop. When j equal to 3, I do a break. This break only breaks out of the inner loop, so the control flow will jump to over here, and the print line will be called 10 times. If I do break out loop, the control flow will jump all the way over here. So the, both the loop of i and j will be stopped, and the print line has been called only twice. And similarly for the continue. If I do a continue, it will continue to the next iteration of the inner loop. And if I do continue out loop, it will continue to the next iteration of the out loop. Now let's talk about the switch statement. A switch statement is just like a collection of if-else statements. Here we have an i, which is an integer, and if i is equal to 1, we print this, if i equal to 2, we do this, if i is equal to either 3 or 4 or 9, we do this, and if i is in the range of 10 to 15, we print this. If i is equal to v, v is 16, we do the other things. And for every other value of i, we do the default behavior. One thing to note is the list of the condition for i must be exhaustive. You can't have a value of i that's not covered by any one of these conditions. So if I remove the default statement, then it won't compile, because if i is equal to 20, it is not covered by any one of the condition. So the list of the conditions must be exhaustive. Switch can be very powerful when it is used together with tuples. For example, here we have a tuple of x, which is a tuple of integer and a string. When x is 23 bob, we do this. If we don't care about the first value of the tuple, as long as the second value is bob, we do this. If the first field is from 0 to 16 and the second field is bob, we do this and if the first field is 0 to 16 and we don't care about the second field, we do this. Note that in this case x is 23 and bob, so it matches the first case, but it also matches the second case. But the printout is only from the first case, so which means there's no fourth rule from the first one to the second one. 
Once this is executed, it jumps out of the switch statement. If you do want to fall through, you can use the keyword of fall through. And now, both the first one and the second one will be evaluated, even if the first one has a match. So both of them are printed out. Now let's talk about value binding in switch statements. Value binding means that we are not only want to match the value, but also want to bind its value to a variable. For example, switch x let age Bob. This means as long as the second field is Bob, we don't care about the first field, but we are binding the value of the first field to the variable of age so that later on we can use that variable. And similarly, the second statement says as long as the first field is 23, we don't care about the second field, but we are binding its value to the variable name. And the last one is also very similar. Now here is the question. What if I care about the matching of the first field, but also I want to bind its value to a variable? How do I do that? This is where you need the WHERE statement. Here is an example. Switch x let age Bob where age equal to 23. Now we are matching the value of the first field, but also bind its value to a variable. The where statement is very powerful. You can do any kind of check with the where statement. The second example is where age modulo 2 equal to 1, then we print out it is an odd age Bob. So you can put a very complicated check-in on the age in the where statement. That's all for now. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and see you next time.